Okay, guys, this is going to be my review of Uncut Gems. And I was surprised how much I liked this film. I really was, because I was like, I knew, like, it was good, but it didn't really get a lot of Oscar. Like, it, like originally before the, Os the, the Oscars came out, like, everybody was, like, all the buzz about Adam Sandler and stuff, but it didn't really go anywhere, so I was like, okay, maybe it's a good film, but not a great film, whatever. But I was pleasantly surprised with the film, and I was really entertained and engaged with the story in the film, because, again... Because there wasn't, like, an overall plot of this film, it was about this guy, Howard, who keeps making the wrong decisions, bad decisions, that keep costing him and costing him and costing him and costing him. And, and I think that, that was what it was entertaining. Was it wasn't story-based, the, 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 or plot-based, I should say. The story was seeing how this guy struggles... To make a living, how this guy struggles to get out of a rabbit hole, and, and what I love is how this is almost like a hole, you know, a, a big hole, and 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 we and we follow Howard going down that hole, and that's what's entertaining about it, and how his situation becomes worse and worse and worse, and while I, this it by no way is a comedy, there's almost that comedic aspect of where you don't, it's not like you laugh at the film or laugh with the film. You just laugh at the scenario about the film. And I think in some ways, almost that feels like what the film was meant to be about. Where it's like, I've caught myself laughing, but laughing at the shitty position Howard found himself in. And it wasn't like I was laughing because someone said a joke, and I wasn't laughing because the film was dumb. I was laughing at the fact, like, oh my god. I'm laughing in amazement. Laughing at the fact, like, I can't believe this character was in this situation. And it felt realistic in that sense. Because it ultimately, at the end, it didn't have a happy ending. Howard's bad decisions cost him his life. Cost him his children to have a father. And to have his wife. And a girlfriend. And all that money he bet on Kevin Garnett. And so what I love is that, that realism of the film. Where it wasn't like, oh, but at the end, he makes a good decision. Because... That whole final scene was so t intense because you had the whole stuff with, you know, um, following um, what's, uh, Julia, you know, trying to cash in the money while being chased. But then at the same time, you had Howard, you know, watch the game and he gets the money. But earlier in the scene, you figured out that, that one of the guys trapped in the, the room with him had a gun. So, you, so I figured, oh, how is Howard going to get out of that? And when Howard opened the door... I was like, what are you doing? You, how are you going to assume that he doesn't shoot you? And he does. And what I love is that never, where it never, it always felt consistent with who Howard was. And I think that's what I love the most about this, was that, you know, that this film was very much interesting because it felt like it was nothing we've seen before, nothing we've seen where we would truly see a character go down, go down, go down, and never come up, you know? And never find success. And never find what you wanted. And to have a true definition of a, of a, of a, of a, not a cliffhanger, but a sad ending. An upsetting ending. And not, by any stretch of imagination, a happy ending. And I think this was the perfect role for Adam Sandler. Because it was like, it was dramatic, but it felt like it was like, he can play it, how, what would, it, Adam Sandler can play it dramatically, but yet still come off as someone who um, is not nothing special, is nothing crazy, is nothing out of the ordinary, and 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 is nothing like he didn't like didn't he? He was just that perfect role because you can see based on just how Adam Sandler looks, like he would be a guy who would make a lot of dumb decisions based on his voice, based on his body, based on his you know performance. And I just love that, again, you're engaged and interested and intrigued by the different scenarios because the main idea is, like, how is Howard going to get out of this one? What's he going to do to get the stone? What's he going to do to get, you know, his, you know, Julie back or get the money or pay off these guys or do have all these goals and have all these things where it's like you see what I love equally with, with following the Howard character is where ha the Howard character goes because the Howard character is interesting but not relatable in in, uh, in a lot of ways not um a, a rootable 
um, character, but you're you interested because you see the situations he's in. And I think it's that symbiotic relationship of this Howard character and the situations he's forced with and how the situations mixed with Howard the character um, crafts this incredible, incredible, th almost thriller that you don't know what's going to happen. And at the end of the film, the, the possibility that you thought was the most um, likely, which is, you know, Howard getting killed, happens. And I just love that rabbit hole of going down, 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 and never coming up because we always see the opposite. We always see up. We always see that, that basic structure, of, you know, like a, of a roller coaster where you go up halfway through the film, you go down and find your way back up again. But this was just the roller coaster going straight down, up. That's it. That's the end of the roller coaster. But that was what made it interesting, where it never felt like this was based off another film. It never felt like it took tropes from another film. This felt like it was its own thing. It felt like at the end of that, you think that there's that glimmer of hope, and they and they completely dawned on you because I think it was like the filmmakers never tried to make the best, most satisfying story, the most entertaining story. They just tried to make a great grounded story, and a great and because I felt like this film always was felt grounded, and and not relatable, but felt like something that could happen in real life. That tension was there. But, and because you, throughout the film, you you see Howard doing stuff that are so dumb, and you almost have to cringe, and you almost can't watch because they're like, Howard, what are you doing? But that's what made it relatable because I think what I not relatable, but what made it realistic was that Howard is not a perfect character. He's not, you know, Superman. He's not James. He's not Superman. He's not James Bond. He's not Tom Cruise. He's Howard, and I think Adam Sandler is that perfect idea embodiment of that because he is a famous celebrity. He is a famous guy, but when you really think about Adam Sandler, he is nothing special, and I think that's why he can really play this character so perfectly. Where it's like he is not what you think of. H Howard is not what you think of when you when you think of a jeweler. Howard is not the guy you think of when you think of a guy who would be in the in these different twisted situations. And I love that little characters have big dividends because this is a very much a character-based story where it's like, yes, it's Uncooked Gems and the gem has a big role, but it's also about the characters and their connection to Howard because it's Howard's story. While this, this film has a great supporting cast, the second you know person with the most screen time is probably Julia, but yeah, even she is in it for the minority of the film because it's really Howard's interaction switching between this interaction with this character and that character and this character and that character. So I just really like the tension and the and it's just the unique storytelling. I'm trying to think of any flaws. I mean, the, the only flaw I guess I can really think of is that I, I think it was also still nothing that special, nothing that terrible, um, where, where it was never amazing. It was never grand. It, it um... Uh, it, but, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it was just, like, again, like I said, I, I think it was a great film, but it never, again, never made it to that epitome of films. Never made it to, like, the echelon of top films, because I think, I think it missed the added value of, of, of what makes a great film overall, where this was was almost great for that type of genre, but not necessarily amazing. And that tr transcends its genre, genre or tr transcends films a as a whole. But I really enjoyed this film. I thought it was a really great film. Um, now, do I think it should have got more Oscar love? I definitely think the, the Safdie brothers, the directors, should have... I, it's hard to judge because I didn't see... You know, I didn't see... Um, uh, you know, what... what uh, is it for it? You know, I didn't see, uh, what's it called? Uh, what, you know, Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or any of those films. So it's like, because that's the thing. When people say snubbed in terms of Oscars or should have deserved an Oscar, what I feel like a lot of people, I feel like, overlook is when you say someone should be snubbed, the next thing you have to realize is who do you take out? Because there's times when someone's like, he's snubbed for Best Actor, he's snubbed for Best Picture, 
But then what out of the 10, or what out of the 5, or what out of the 7, or out of the... Because, like, uh, Uncut Gems, okay. Should I, Like, I could easily go on record and say, oh, it deserved a Best Picture nomination. But suppose there was only, you know, I think in this year it was only nine. So who would you remove? And if and sometimes you might not think of, of one. And you're like, so that's why. So yeah. When I look at the five best actor nominations, I'm like, okay, I don't know if I necess- necessarily should remove one just for Adam Sandler. I don't know. That's all interesting stuff. Whatever. Stay tuned for videos. Come right you.